So good morning. Uh, my name is uh, Michael Ferris. I'm a professor at the University of Wisconsin in the Computer Sciences Department and also a hold appointment at the Wisconsin Institute for Discovery. What I'd like to talk to you this morning about is a project that was funded by the Tommy Thompson Center on Public Leadership and is a project called Werewolf. And what I would like to talk about while Werewolf is a, a software tool I would like to uh, introduce its uh, use and its intended use uh, is for policy analysis. And I'd like to explain this in the context uh, of net zero, the drive towards 100% uh, carbon free electricity. And in so doing, uh, what I'm going to talk about are the interactions between operations, planning, investments, and policies and try to, to give you at least some idea of how this uh, should we envision this working. So this is joint work with a, a colleague of mine at Wisconsin, Josh Arnold, uh, a former uh, postdoc of mine, Adam Christensen, who's now at uh, GAMS Corporation in Washington, and uh, my former advisor, in fact, uh, Andy Philpott, who uh, is in New Zealand. So uh, in particular, uh, this uh, work started uh, when I visited on a sabbatical leave New Zealand. And as I got there, uh, the Prime Minister uh, announced a, a, a drive, a policy drive, towards a transition to 100% renewable electricity by 2035. And so my colleague Philpott and I decided that, that we would try to build a model, which we call Gemstone, to help inform this policy. Uh, and this has uh, used, while there was a, an idea to stimulate new investment and to uh, facilitate this transition to 100% uh, renewable elect electricity, our model was uh, used to help inform the policy, which resulted in a Zero Carbon Act, which was passed in November 2019, and, and the establishment of a, a new body, the Climate Commission, which would actually help to enact uh, these uh, policies. So the model more generally showed that policies matter. They can affect the reduction amounts and the cost of these things. And this graphic on the, uh, on the bottom left actually shows that. Uh, but it also shows that as you go, uh, the reduction in carbon becomes more and more draconian then the portfolio of required technologies, the generating technologies that you need to install within your physical system become more complex. And so you can see in the, the top graphic here, uh, the, the x-axis uh, is a, a drive towards more and more uh, reductions in CO2 emissions. And as you can see, the final graph actually has lots of colors in it which corresponds to uh, a whole host of different technologies, complex different interactions of those technologies as the reduction increases. The models show the uncertainties, how to deal with uncertainties about uh, rainfall, demand, and things like that are key, and incentives that you need to provide to actually get people to engage in these policies are really important. And that actually established that framework for, for the 2019 uh, Zero Climate Act. So when I came back to, New, uh, to Wisconsin, uh, the idea was how could we adapt that work uh, to the Wisconsin framework? And so this is where we uh, derived uh, and were nicely funded by Tommy Thompson Center for Public Policy Analysis, uh, the Werewolf product, uh, Project, which corresponds to the Wisconsin expansion of renewable electricity with optimization under long-term forecasts. So um, Werewolf is the better way of doing it. So what is this uh, model? This model actually recognizes that policy decisions are typically a large, uh, a large time scale, 15 to five year time scales. And yet, uh, as is shown in this graphic, uh, those decisions or design or policy decisions affect the short-term operation, which occurs uh, at the, the right-hand side of, uh, of this figure. And so what we wanted to do was build a tool that could actually help the people who are making decisions at these large scale 
design or strategic policy decisions uh, to actually uh, enable them to make decisions which were educated by uh, effects that could occur at the, at the shorter time scale. Uh, we wanted to enable these people to actually distinguish between objectives, that's what they want to do, and actions, those are the things that enable them to actually get there and to understand the effects of uncertainty and, and incentives. What we actually try to do as well is to explore a, a larger design space. And we try to do this with a, with a quick turnaround. Can you actually solve these models or generate results that can come up uh, in, in very quick timescales? So all good models have to be uh, um, um, educated by good data. And so the Wolf data uh, actually collects data from a bunch of EPA data, uh, NREL, uh, the National Renewable um, uh, Laboratories, uh, and, and the Environmental Protection Agency. And what's depicted on this figure are offshore uh, winds. So uh, offshore winds, so you can see there's lots of uh, wind, uh, offshore wind capacity here, onshore wind capacity, and solar capacity. And so these are actually uh, part of the outputs that we can see the types of data that we're uh, informing our model by. Uh, and the, the data is downscaled uh, to allow us to do county level uh, analyses. And so while it's uh, specialized for Wisconsin uh, within the Werewolf project, uh, a user can customize the regions uh, to use this uh, data and this framework much more generally. It also has some physical data which corresponds to an electricity system, and that corresponds to the transmission network, certain scenarios maybe uh, of demand, uh, and also something called a load demand curve, which corresponds to the different uh, demand that you might get for electricity at different times in the day, and this is actually uh, utilized in lots of electrical engineering applications. So all of that data comes into our model uh, and that model is available. We actually make the model itself uh, available on GitHub so that anybody can use it. The data, as I say, is adapted from EPA needs and uh, NREL reads model data. Uh, and after a data initialization, each run takes around uh, uh, five to 30 minutes to generate the results. And what we intend to, uh, the usage uh, strategy, is to show the effects of different strategies driving towards 100% carbon-free energy, or in particular electricity, by 2050, as is dictated in Wisconsin or encouraged by uh, the policy coming out of uh, the governor's office. And we want to look at coal plant closures, rapid deployment of renewables, and the increase in electricity vehicle uptake and how that might affect uh, these uh, outcomes and, and our drive towards 100% carbon-free electricity. We actually have used this model and the application that encompasses this model is exercised, uh, has been exercised by uh, WPUI, uh, PSC, the Public Services Commission, and more recently, we with engagements with the Wisconsin Office of Sustainability and Clean Energy. So all of these three people have been interested uh, in uh, looking at results and possibly um, interacting with the werewolf model uh, as we move forward. So just to show you some of the things that, that could come as outcomes, uh, here I, I show you some outcomes uh, within Wisconsin. So we actually have set up the model. So the data is instantiated at a county level with transmission networks uh, associated with uh, the upper Midwest and with particular data focused on uh, the, the state of Wisconsin. And as we move from uh, left to right in this figure, we go from 0% uh, carbon reduction through 40% carbon reduction to 80% carbon reduction. And what's uh, depicted on these figures in the top line are, are actually the uptake of new wind within Wisconsin. 
And so you can see at 0%, this is our baseline, at 0%, there is no new uptake, uh, but at 40% uh, reduction, we actually see no new uptake in solar, but some uh, small uptake, there's actually some little gray colors here, but most of the uptake is in this region for uh, onshore wind. Uh, and then as we go to 80% reduction, then we see huge, uh, much more investment uh, in wind technology all over the, the southeast uh, and, and possibly, uh, as, as a, sorry, the southeast and the northeast portion of the state. And similarly, we see some uh, large uptake in solar uh, installation that is necessary in order to receive this 80% uh, carbon reduction. We can also look at the whole gamut of different generation capabilities. And for that, uh, uh, I refer you to being able to run this model uh, and look at more details of the output. How do we do that? We actually have something, uh, we've employed a new software tool called Miro, which is a model inter interface with uh, rapid orchestration. So it's a way to take the models, the things that we nerdy mathematicians build, and actually make them available to policy analysts. So people who understand questions that they want to ask of a model, uh, but are not necessarily uh, comfortable with actually changing the uh, underlying model. And so what we do within this interface is we allow a, a, a stylized or a restricted view of the data. So in here we have input widgets where we can change uh, the demand growth for electricity units. So the uptake of electricity vehicle, uh, light uh, uh, EV vehicles, or we could limit the capacity investment, or we could allow both renewable and uh, non-renewable generators to shut down. So all of these are limited changes that, that define new scenarios and the generator data and the generation capacity that is uh, allowable or uh, assumed to be part of the policy decision are all enabled within uh, the input system to the model without having to understand what the model does. All the user has to do is affect this data and then just solve the model. Once the model is solved, then the output, the, the, the user can actually explore the outputs, both in a tabular form and also in visual form. And so in here, uh, we see the uh, outputs for a particular scenario analysis, a particular policy implication. Uh, and in here, we're looking at how, where the onshore wind is actually implemented within, uh, within the system, which contains not only systems within Wisconsin, but in the neighboring areas, because those are the areas that are affected by changes to generation capacity in Wisconsin. Finally, you can actually see the change in generation profile. And so the Miro package or the Weirwolf Miro package actually shows you the, the, the whole portfolio and how that portfolio changes from business as usual, 2020, uh, to a, a policy that is invoked uh, here. The time frame is in the 2030 time frame, uh, but we could move out to, to further generation capability at 2050 or something like that. So you see the different portfolio which is being generated. So what we would like to do is, uh, and we hope that uh, if you come upon this uh, talk, uh, you will come back and contact us either by uh, visiting our website here or by contacting me directly at the, at the email, which is listed on this, um, the, this slide. Uh, but what I'd like to leave you with is a, a couple of ideas. Uh, the, the fact is that models can inform policy and the models that are implemented, the kind of complicated models here, but uh, I, I don't want you to um, get uh, a word about the mathematics, but those models can inform the policy and those models can show effects and costs of constraints. And so within a stylized or within a, a specific uh, policy analysis tool, such as Werewolf, uh, you can show how investment is coupled to reality, but how such models 
can show the effects and also the costs of particular constraints. And so what I'm thinking about of the constraints in this model are these constraints which are limiting uh, the carbon emissions and things like this. Uh, we allow you to actually specify and generate a, a bunch of high level scenarios and you can solve these in close to real time. So you can solve these in time frames of five to 30 minutes. And we are interested in uh, getting feedback uh, from particularly from utility or policy experts about how this model or this application can be used and can be useful in your utility or your regulatory planning efforts. So we're hopeful uh, that you can uh, get, become engaged with us either in one-on-one -on -one demonstrations of our model or suggestions of different policy interventions that you might want to investigate. So as I said before, I'd love for you to contact me uh, or look at the, the website, which is listed in red at the bottom of this uh, slide. So thanks very much. I hope to hear from at least some of you. Cheers.